Right. Well, I, for one, am becoming slightly... Sl- well, I'm over. I'm over, and it's only been a day or two. I am over all our mainstream media just saying, what did Chris Hipkins do today? Here are nice pictures of people loving him. Uh, and that's what I saw on the telly news last night. So what's Chris up to? The um, I, I have to say, remarkable journalism out of stuff this morning. They have a headline that says... New PM may pull votes. You don't think stuff that was the idea all along when they jacked up this transfer of power before Christmas? Of course, the idea is that he may pull votes. So your headline this morning is somewhat uh, meaningless. But I do want to talk about an issue that Prime Minister Chris Hipkins raised in his first uh, press conference when we got the news that he, he was taking over last Sunday. He suggested that we needed to have a debate or a discussion around co-governance, about uh, the uh, growing trend driven largely by uh, disconnected uh, judges, bureaucrats and woke politicians, that we are going to create a country that essentially has two governments, that Pakiha. Um, Pakiha, whatever they are, um, share power with Māori groups. The Crown shares power with Māori. It is a very controversial um, proposal, and most of us, I'm going to go out on a limb, don't like it. But to have a debate like the Prime Minister wants, like the current government wants, I guess involves people and community groups getting involved in discussing and putting forward their views. And I guess if you're a community that wants to put forward your views on the now accepted as contentious issue of co-governance that we're told is misunderstood by many people, I guess you'd have that community discussion at a community facility. Well, Sport Northland, which is a community organisation funded by local and central government, has apparently blocked a group of interested citizens from hiring a public venue because they don't like that group's views on co-governance. Governance. Julian Batchelor from Stop Co-Governance says Sport Northland has acted unlawfully and breached Section 21 of the Human Rights Act, um, discriminating against the group on the grounds of political opinion. I think this is an important story. Co-governance is an important a- and live issue. And also the issue of freedom of speech is an incredibly important issue, not just to the platform and what we do, but I think uh, for the country as a whole. So joining us now is Julian Batchelor, who was the spokesperson for Stop Co-Governance. Julian, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Sean. How are you? Good intro. Thank you. All right, Julian, I I first want to, because you're new, you're not nationally known, what is Stop Go co- uh, Co-Governance? What does your group uh, do? How many members does it have? Well, we are a, a growing group of people now in the thousands uh, who are standing against co-governance for a number of reasons. Um, one is that we think democracy is under threat and uh, there is absolutely no mandate in the Treaty of Waitangi for co-governance. So the whole and uh, the entire foundation of it is uh, fraudulent. All right. So you've got a very clear pos- position on something which we recognise as contentious. What does your group, a- a- and when you say you've got thousands of supporters, is that people following you on Facebook or what? No, that's a database that we have. I'm not sure how many because I'm not the webmaster, but it's in the thousands. All right. Um, how long have you been operating? Five months. Okay, and you're based where? Apart in, from in, in, uh, in, the, Wong- in Whangarei? In, in, in Whangarei, yeah. Okay. I'm based in Whangarei, yeah. Okay. Now, you want to have a public meeting, is that right? We want to have a whole series of public meetings. We've got 30 public meetings uh, jacked up all around the country. So Whangarei was going to be our kick-off event. And so we went round several um, halls and places where we could hold a public event, and one of those was Sport Northland. And when we got there... Well, what, uh, what's the facility said, oh, they've got that you were interested in? It's a, it's a public building that'll hold a, a few hundred people, like 250 people. Okay, what's it called? It's called Sport Northland. It's, a, it's okay. part of their complex in Wangarei. Okay, right, okay. And, and it, it's perfect for what we wanted. Mm-hmm. Who owns that? Who owns that building? 
And who owns uh, Sport Northland? Sport Northland is a is an organisation that's funded by four councils, the Kuiper Council, the uh, Far North District Council, the Wangarei Council, the Wangarei District Council. So they all put money into it, plus it's also got central government funding. So it's a public building, funded right. by the public, and also it gets money from uh, user charges. All right, so it's a public venue available for public hire. That's it. Any and all comers, Okay. So, Julian, you you say that's the building for us. That's where we'll have our kickoff meeting. What happened from there? So, I rang the uh, I, I rang the, uh, the the people who run it, and uh, Stu Middleton is one of the managers there. And so, we sat down, and and I said to him, "Hey, listen, we better talk about what we're going to do here." And he said, "Yeah, what are, what are you going to be talking about?" So, I told him, and he said, "Well, I'm going to have to go and discuss this with the other managers, the three other managers of the building." And um, and I'll get back to you. So I went, okay. And uh, then the email came back saying, you know, I'm sorry, we've discussed this as managers and we can't have you because we've just signed up to co-governance in Tuterio Waitangi. And I went, that doesn't sound right to me. This is a public building and that we need to have free speech. I mean, you know, Voltaire said this, I do not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend it to the death your right to say it. And so I'm thinking... Mate, this has now become a free speech issue. And this is the very reason that we are... Against you want to have the debate. Because it's, we want to have a debate. And it's the very reason that we, you know, that we want to get into public places and get to the public and talk to them. Because you can't do this now in New Zealand because of the public interest um, journal, you know, journalism fund, the $55 million fund, yeah. where many, many of these media ag agencies have been bought out. You're one of the good ones. Sean, so keep it, keep it going. Yeah, yeah, mind you, it creates its own financial pressures. Um, so they wrote to you and said you cannot. When did you want to hire the venue? When you were pla when you were you planning to have this meeting? On on the eleventh of uh, February. Eleventh oh, of February. Okay. And, and how much were you going to pay for the venue? Oh, a couple of hundred dollars. A couple of hundred dollars. And they've just said yeah. they wrote to you. What did they say when they wrote to you? What did the letter say essentially? The they said, they said, thank you for your time yesterday and forwarding the information on your movement. As mentioned yesterday, Sport, News, Sport Northland has recently adjusted their trust deed to recognise Tuterio Waitangi and have changed their board structures to that of co-governance. Due to these factors and after viewing your website and the information you sent, we have unfortunately have to make the decision to decline your facility booking. I hope this is understandable. Nā mihi, Stu Middleton. No, he and I said, indeedy. <laughs> no, me, he and Didi. Stu Middleton's. And I said, no, that's wrong. That's completely wrong. So this you went a, back to him? Free... Uh, no, I haven't gone back to him. I went straight to the uh, the uh, Human Rights Commission and we, we uh, filed a complaint with them saying this is wrong. This is a public facility and we still live in a country where there is freedom to debate issues and we, and we need to do that. And all the politicians, including uh, Luxton, is saying uh, we need to have a debate about this. And here we are, we have the, the proponents of co-governance going around the country, signing up uh, organisations to ban people who want to actually bring them into the public domain and have a debate. OK. Were you going to have any restrictions on who could attend your meeting? Absolutely none. OK, so it was going to be an open, an open forum. Um, what was the response of the Human Rights Commission when you laid your complaint, or have you had nothing official back from them? Nothing back from them yet. See, normally... I mean, George... Mm, they'd on. be outraged and they'd put out a press release and say this is a terrible breach of human rights. I mean, perhaps if you were in a group with the attitudes you'd had, you might have got a, a different comeback. When did you lay the complaint with them? Uh, uh, yesterday. All right, OK, so this is very much a, but you a imagine, live issue. Sean, Sean, you... Sean, you imagine this if it was a Maori group who was banned from speaking about Maori issues. Imagine that. Ming yeah. Foon would have been up there with his, with, his, with his picnic basket and just having a field day. All right. So you have complained. Have you gone back again to Stu Middleton and said, we want you to reconsider, we think you're discriminating against us under the Bill of Rights? No, but apparently stuff's already gone to them, and so it's, they, they have, they've declined to uh, have a chat about it. Okay, and I have to note, we asked Stu Middleton... We asked Sport Northland, we invited them on the program this morning and they have declined and we'll keep on banging uh, on that door. 
I guess it's kind of <laughs> ironic, Julian, and you and I may not agree on your views on co-governance, but uh, as Voltaire said, though I don't think he's a rape player in Whangarei, um, you know, <laughs> you've got a right to hold a meeting and discuss it. And when we have people from across the political spectrum saying we need to have a debate about this, well, you've got to have that debate in public spaces. You know, so this seems to me a very uh, reasonable, if not progressive, uh, thing that you're doing. Uh, it just seems crazy, therefore, that you are, and you are most certainly being uh, discriminated uh, against, Julian. Julian, uh, February the 11th, you, you want to have the meeting. Are there other venues available that are suitable? What are you doing there, in real terms about that? We, we found alternative venues, but that, that venue was the one we wanted. I mean... That's a perfect venue for, for what we were wanting. So that's that's the one we were gunning for. But you know what? We've got 30 meetings all around the country. If people want to know where they're happening, they're on our website, stopcogovernance.kiwi. Yep. Um, I've, written a, I've written a book on this issue that people can get hold of. It's free to read online. Um, and uh, I spoke at the Walkworth Town Hall straight after Winston Peters spoke um, uh, for, for an hour. And um, that's on, on YouTube, and we've had 15,000 views on that in two months. Yeah. Um, Julian, can I ask you, uh, is your group politically aligned? Are there any dark funders who are giving you money? How, how do you run things? No, no, no. We're, we're, not st we're not aligned with any political party. This is basically an organisation that wants to put pressure on all the political parties mm. to stop co-governance full stop. And the reasons for that are outlined in my book. Okay, so you've got a position and you're standing by it and in an open democracy, you're allowed to have a, a position on policy and you're allowed to advocate for it. That's indeed how democracy uh, works um, or, or should work. This kind of, Julian, has kind of got um, the feel of the attempt, at, well, the cancellation of Stefan uh, Molyneux and uh, Lauren Southern, and also the Don Brash Massey University controversy, also the Speak Up for Women Massey University shutdown. It looks like you're being discriminated against in very much the same way. Hey, yeah, but Sean, here's the question I have. Who, who put pressure on them, on Sport Northland, to sign up to T. T, T Terio Waitangi and also to... to co well, no one puts any and pressure. They, this, is, this is the way government departments and bureaucracies are running things these days. And we've, yeah, we've talked about this yeah, on the platform. The, yeah, but where's it, is, it, is that central Wellington putting the pressure on? Oh, that's on the they, judiciary they and decisions about co-governance and what the treaty means going back to, you know, the mid-80s. This is a whole raft of policies that says this is the way things should be. This is the stuff... We should have the debate on, but we're not having the debate Ab on. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, George Washington said this. George Washington said this. If the freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent, w we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. The whole, the, the New Zealand public is being led like sheep to the slaughter without any alternative voice being, 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 being heard because of the, 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 the media being tied up by this um, public interest journalism fund. Okay, so you have had no um, correspondence, the, only the original correspondence from Sport Northland and no correspondence yep. back yet from your complaint to the Human Rights Commission? Not yet, no. All right, have you got a lawyer involved? No, but we will if it goes, if, it, if we don't get a good result out of this. It'll be straight to okay. the lawyer. What I've are you looking for? What does the them. good result look like for you? Good result would be in that building and a massive crowd, and even even maybe change the change open up three rooms and have a thousand people in the room. All right, and, and look, you're telling me that Sport Northland is essentially a public body funded through rates and through taxpayer organisations. That's exactly what it is. All and right. central government. All right, Julian, we are going to keep in contact with you on this story, and I guess it's the sort of story we go into bat on. Not necessarily, because we agree with everything you say, but we do agree with your right to say it and hire a public venue to discuss, to have the debate that, you know, even the Prime Minister uh, says we need to have uh, on co-governance. I thank you uh, very... Well, by the way, what reaction since you've been public with this have you had? Fantastic. I've got a car that's signed with Stop Co-Governance on it. I'm getting trucks tooting and giving me the thumbs up. And, um, you know, it's been an amazing response. And, and people all over the country are worried about this issue. Um, Co-governance is not wor working.
It's a misleading name, co-governance. In reality, it's just about unelected, unaccountable, unchallengeable, random Maori are being given authority over all of us, including all ethnicities, including all Maori who aren't uh, among the favoured few. So it's not working. It's not going to work. It has no legal mandate in the Treaty of Waitangi, and it's got to be stopped. All right. I thank you very much for your time. I have a suspicion, Julian, uh, we're going to be talking again in the quite near future. And I thank you for, for coming on the platform this morning and, and, well, giving your side of the story. And we tried to get the other side in, in silence so far. Thank you very much indeed. All right, Sean, thanks. Cheers. That is Julian Batchelor. He's a spokesperson. Well, he sounds like he's the guy running uh, pretty well. Uh, a group called Stop Co-Government. Governance. And they're allowed, you're allowed in New Zealand to run a group called Stop Co-Governance. And if you're allowed to do that, and you're allowed to have a public meeting, you should be allowed to use a public be- venue for it. But Sport Northland say no. They say no. Um, so oh, we're going to kick into the story. I, I think we absolutely have to. Going back to the 2022 annual report of Sport Northland, it says this. And just make sure you're sitting down because you might, you might, your blood pressure might go up as I read this to you. So this is the 2022 annual report of Sport Northland. We have continued to develop our cultural knowledge and capability furthering the progress achieved from past years. The journey of understanding and enacting our responsibilities under He Whakaputanga, the Te Triti o Waitangi articles and principles, has kin- continued th- through Te Triti training education throughout the year, including a trip to Waitangi, where we immersed ourselves, as well as undertaking one of our strategic plan workshops. At the July board meeting, the board made the courageous decision to appoint us both as co-chairs for a 12-month trial. So literally, Sport Northland is a co-governed organisation. This was a result of the board realising that 50% board non-Māori Māori composition was really only a start of the co-governance journey. So what we find now is Sport Northland has a racially based quota policy for its governance. For true partnership, we need to venture into the non-Māori Māori leadership of the board. The result is a work in progress as we learn on the job how to effectively co-chair the board. We realise there is no playbook for these roles, so I believe that effective communications, patience, reflection and the support of the rest of the board is critical in making it work. We have been fortunate to be part of the, of the national sports governance community, which is a great opportunity to network with other board chairs and develop our board leadership skills. So it, it's oh, skills. So it is all love, mung beans, and co-governance at Sport Northland. But it would appear that their political correctness now means they are making discriminatory decisions on who can hire their public venues to hold public meetings. And this really, it's so ironic on so many levels that this cuts to exactly what the issue about co-governance is. Um, so Julian, ba- I don't know what sort of guy Julian Batchelor is. I've never spoken to him again in my life, but he lives in a democracy where he can have views that other people disagree with and he should be allowed to have a meeting and see if anyone turns up to discuss it. I'm really interested in your thoughts on this story. Um, My prediction, it is going to be a big story. And I would say to Sport Northland first, I would say, please come on and give your side of the story so I can balance my coverage and have all perspectives. What I always think when an organisation like yours won't front is that you kind of know that you're wrong. Uh, Human Rights Commission will be getting hold of you later today. Uh, We might try and get you on the show today. And I think we'll go to other local body officials um, in the Whangarei area, uh, who of course provide the funding to uh, Sport Northland, and see what they've got to say about the clear discrimination that is going on against the group uh, Stop Co-Governance in regards to this public venue.